don't mean to rumble y'all, I know you waiting in the wing, but I'm doing my thing, where's the love? Okay, so today we're going to be having a look at the Windows 8 developer preview. So basically, I just wanted to give everybody a real quick look at it and uh, show them how it works and uh, basically what features have changed and what's different. Uh, now, of course, this is a very early preview of it, so you're not going to really get everything that's changed, but uh, I can give you a pretty quick overview of it. And uh, yeah, so far, um, I, have, I can't say I've been extremely impressed. I do like the tile interface, which we will get to, but I'll give you a real quick view for just a second. This is a new lock screen. Uh, pretty cool aesthetics, if you ask me. Uh, this is on the HP DV6-3030TX, and uh, yeah, it's running pretty smooth. I uh, didn't really have any hiccups with it. I actually did an upgrade on it, and it still runs pretty good, so I'm happy with that. And I will go ahead and log in, and I'll come back after I've logged in. So, as you saw before, this is the home screen here. Not much has changed except for this grey Windows Start button. Now, you would expect when you click Start um, for it to go to the Start menu and to have applications and whatnot uh, accessible, but uh, the default right now, when you click it, you go to your tile interface. Now, I don't know. I mean, I'll, just general users are going to get pretty confused with that. What I'm seeing now is um, not so much Windows getting easier for the consumer, but a bit harder. I know business users are going to be pretty damn confused when they first use this. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to revert back to the old Windows 7 view, but even the Windows button here, I mean, you go to the tile interface, which I like, but for business users, it's not too useful. Now, this is Windows uh, Internet Explorer 10, which is pretty nice. Uh, the buttons have changed up the top here. I don't really like them. They're a bit fat and, yeah, not that that uh, aesthetically appealing, but um, they're there. And uh, other applications like Google Chrome seems to work. I didn't really have any problems with that installing it. Your file browser now has, to me, which is pretty weird, it has the um, the interface you would expect to find in Microsoft Word which I don't really like. It's just too much in that area. Uh, I, you know, I think that it would be cool as an option, but you know what I mean? To have it default hidden like that, you know, because this is just too much in my opinion. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I'll go ahead and just show through here. Like, uh, for example, we have all your different areas you can go to here, same as before. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything's the same. The text has changed. Uh, this uh, new view, like in Microsoft Word, is here. Your buttons have changed up the top. You've also got different icons up here uh, that serve as different functions. And when we go down here to the left-hand corner, you get this pop-up here tells you the time and date, which I'm not sure if it is correct because I haven't really set this in a while. Just, just using this as a demonstration for everybody. Um, now, you can check out your devices here, which is pretty cool. You've got your side pop-ups. Uh, I'm not going to actually go on anything right now. You can go search. It searches build uh, throughout all your apps. So we can just search internet and yeah. And now if you open an app within an app, you can actually get pretty confused because if you keep hitting uh, the Windows Home button and Home button, it doesn't actually go to the desktop. It goes to the previous app, which was whatever you, in this case, stocks. So um, that might confuse people as well. So you got to click back on your desktop here. Pretty cool animations, I like that. Um, again, if you want to search, you can go to settings in here as well, um, which isn't your conventional settings. It just gives you like your Wi-Fi network, um, your sound, the brightness, all of that, your language, power. It's not your actual conventional settings. Uh, if you want to access that, the way that I found to do it, you just click personalize. Probably the easiest way to do it. I'm, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. And you can go control panel home and you get your standard view. So now we're going to go into my favorite part, which is the tile interface, which is supposed to be used with touchscreen. Um, not so much what I'm using now with a trackpad. I'm guessing multi-touch trackpads will be able to take advantage of it. But I'll go through real quick. I actually do really like this. You can, about, you can open up Internet Explorer here. Uh, which is pretty cool, so I just want to go ahead and get out of this for a second. I'll go through a few apps here, which I find are pretty cool. Uh, the stock apps, I do actually quite like that. 
Uh, if you go back here, you've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, and, it, you know, like the graphs are pretty cool. Of course, they got the Microsoft stock symbol on there. Um, I'm not actually connected to the internet, so it's not going to show anything. But it shows you it's changed down here, um, how many points it went up, which is pretty cool. The last trade, open, volume, all that. And you can scroll across, which if you had a touch screen, you'd be able to swipe. Um, and it links off to a whole bunch of news articles here, which again is pretty cool, so I'll get out of that. And in the news here, we have you can add your own news, which looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, just your conventional news app, and um, its UI is very nice. The Socialite here, now this is like um, basically Facebook for Windows 8. You can see your profile here, photos, friends, all that. So I go to my profile. I don't like it as much as the Twitter app. Uh, you can see you can post things to the wall. So um, I'll go ahead and write test from Windows 8. And you click right to wall. And so that your message has been posted. And it will come up right there. You can go into Twitterama which is the Twitter app and this is really nice I mean this is this is an app that I would definitely download uh, separately it is that good um, so again I'm gonna hit I'm gonna do test from Windows 8 and again same thing is click tweet and it sends you can also add photos and all that cool stuff and yeah it shows you who you're following um, there's my tweet there uh, the timeline of who posted what uh, you can also click on their profile there and now the profile isn't actually built into the app it brings it up in the web browser which kind of sucks uh, but yeah so I'll go ahead and get out of this for a second you can also go through a whole bunch of apps here I haven't actually tried them but I'm guessing they work alright you got Google Chrome up here which I installed when you install an app it says apps installed down the bottom in like a little green box which is pretty cool and you've also got like for example, piano, I'm not sure what that is, I'm guessing you just... They can... If it's a touch screen, it'd be pretty cool, so... But not so much with a trackpad. And you can mess around with a whole bunch of settings on it. As you can see, but I'm not too interested in the... Um, plethora of apps that come with it, because, yeah. But, the basic apps here, from what I can see, are pretty cool. You've got your control panel here personalize uh, you can change the picture of your lock screen I'm guessing your wireless users I guess they're trying to make one streamlined interface for the touchscreen users which hey I mean it's it's cool if if you can use it from within this if I this was touchscreen I would use it just this alone this brings me on to a quick review of it uh, basically the tile interface on the whole really like it um, I forgot to mention before alarms as you can see down here you can actually add an alarm so the thing I don't like is that they've kind of put Windows 8 the actual um, system I guess on hold it's sort of a separate uh, segregated part of it it's not so much like this seems like the full operating system it just seems like the um, the core operating system is just an add-on uh, you know, it, it doesn't have, like, you know, the start down out. I'm sure you can revert, but, you know, just seeing from my standard settings here, it just doesn't seem like it's a, uh, it, this is meant to be the core OS, uh, as much as this is, but, um, you know, it still functions as a core operating system, as you can see, this is Google Chrome operating, um, in the core operating system, but it just seems like a segregated part, the core operating system, which I don't really like. Uh, and I think it will be confusing for plenty of business users. I don't think they're going to know um, really how to operate it. I think it's going to be a pretty big leap. Uh, it is definitely a leap in the future, being that, you know, the touch interface and all. But uh, I think it just may make things harder for um, people who are used to the core interface of Windows. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick review of Windows 8 and a quick look at it. Um, if you want to test it out for yourself, I'd go ahead and do it. It's not very stable. Um... And I probably wouldn't run it solely uh, unless you wanted to dual boot it, which would be, you know, good to test out. I didn't run any problems with the drivers, so that's always good. Uh, but, yeah, keep in mind it's a beta, so again, don't use it on your main computer. This is just, I'm using this as, uh, as a test, and so runs pretty well on mine, but it may not for yours. So I'd probably do, I'd either dual boot it or run it on a separate computer. So hopefully you enjoyed the review and quick look. If you enjoyed it, subscribe for more.